Hello, Serena Group. Today we are going to be looking at how to integrate your DocuSign account with your ZipForms Plus account with Serena Group. Uh, so I am currently in my ZipForms Plus account. I accessed it from the serenagroup.com bookmarks and Serena ZipForms accounts. Uh, and when I'm in there, I can go ahead and click on the menu for me here, and I can go ahead and hit View Profile. And what you'll see uh, is your information. Um, you can go ahead and edit the information in the About Me section in here. Uh, also, if you want to include your signature um, in all outbound notifications so that your clients kind of see some similarities with emails um, that are um, uh, coming from you, you can actually do that here. And this doesn't interact with DocuSign, but while I'm here, I thought I'd show you quickly how to do that. So you can go over to your um, uh, email account. You can go over to your settings, and you can scroll down to your signature, and you can hit uh, Command A or Control A, depending on uh, which uh, computer you're using, to select your entire signature. Hit Command C or Control C uh, to grab that information, and then jump over to your account here and hit Command V to go ahead and install for uh, subsequent use, and hit Save. That way your signature will be present in all of your outbound communications. Now to integrate your uh, uh, DocuSign account, it's actually quite simple. Uh, you go down to the settings location over here on the left, and you make sure to click the DocuSign button. And this is the hard part. You actually have to remember your email and your password for uh, your DocuSign account. Now if you're integrating with the Serena Group um, uh, account, it should just be your Serena Group uh, email address. Uh, and then your password should be the password that you've set up for that. And once complete, you do have to come down here and hit save. Once you have done that, uh, when you go ahead and uh, are in a transaction, you go ahead and uh, click on, I'm gonna use Blackstone Avenue here, and I am going to uh, click on um, eSign up here. And I can go ahead and create an e-sign session and I can add the files that I want to have signed. So in this case, I'm going to include the disclosure regarding real estate agency relationships, disclosure of consent, market conditions advisory, and I'll go ahead and do the residential purchase agreement in this case. Once I've selected the items that I am looking at um, sending out, I can go ahead and also name uh, this e-signature submission. Uh, and I can just call this offer. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and hit next. And then I can go through and choose the individuals that I want to have sign this. So in this case, the selling agent um, is gonna be me, so I'm actually gonna change this to my uh, Serena Group um, email address. And then let's say buyer one and or buyer two, uh, I'll just go ahead and uh, type in a random email address. And Jane at AOL.com. So as you go through and you check these, you'll need to make sure that these boxes on the left-hand side are checked. And then when you're done with the people that want to sign this item, you can go ahead and hit Done. And you'll see that those individuals are populated here in the specific role that they're in. When you want to go uh, to the next step, you go ahead and hit Next. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to launch uh, a DocuSign session um, uh, with the credentials that you've um, plugged in. Now, what it does at this point is it actually hands the data off from ZipForms over to DocuSign. So there is really no way for uh, you to uh, go back and make edits to signature locations unless you do it in DocuSign. Or if you wanted to add a party, you would have to go in and add all the signature fields. But the nice thing about this is it places all the signature fields in the appropriate locations. You should pre-fill all the information you need uh, within ZipForm so that it appears uh, properly here. If you want to delete certain pages um, that you decide that you don't need subsequently, um, you can go ahead and hit this X button in the lower right-hand corner uh, to delete a page. And then you can go ahead and just confirm all the details uh, of the signature locations uh, in the uh, document. And now, should auto place all of them. Uh, in this case, it looks like it may have missed one of them, possibly because this is an older form uh, that I was using. Um, but it should place them all in the appropriate location. If for some reason you see something is not placed in the appropriate location, 
uh, you can go ahead and uh, place the signature locations wherever you uh, like. So you can go ahead and um, do the normal DocuSign process and add them in here. So it's always best to confirm and, and see what's going on. If you also want to um, uh, change things uh, quickly, you can select multiple things by dragging and dropping. Uh, and you can change the recipient on certain signatures very quickly. So if I messed up, and this is actually the V4 sender, I can go ahead and change it to sender, or I can change it back to Kavita uh, in this case. So you can go through and make sure everything is where it's supposed to be, uh, slide through the entire transaction, make sure it's all correct. And when you're ready to go before sending, I would recommend clicking on other actions up here uh, and edit message and make sure to include a message to your clients indicating uh, the terms of the offer or any special features of the offer uh, that you would like to go ahead and discuss with them. The other thing that you need to do if you haven't discussed it already is in the arbitration uh, section and liquidated damages section of the contract. By default, CAR uh, will leave these as not required fields. So if you want to require these, you would select both of them and make sure to check required and that will make sure that it makes them sign these. Um, once again, um, you would have to either uncheck or check these items if you wanted to make them required. Um, if you are gonna require these initials, it's best practice to have a conversation or an email documentation ahead of time indicating that you've discussed these items and that you want to make sure that they're aware that the, the offer that you're sending to them uh, is gonna require liquidated damages or arbitration. You can also do that within the edit message section and let them know that. And then they always have the option to not sign uh, if they uh, decide that they are not happy with those terms. And then you can go ahead and resend them or edit uh, and change as needed. Now, um, also, if for some reason you realize that you need to attach an additional document, like a property inspection or a receipt for documents that you maybe have stored somewhere else, you can go to the edit documents portion here. You can upload directly from your computer. You can also use cloud storage. Uh, and in this case, if you hit use cloud storage, you can link to your Google Drive account and access all of the files in your Google Drive account. Uh, and what this will do is it will um, uh, give you access to pull things in uh, as needed. Um, or if you need anything um, from the Serena Group Toolkit, you have access to that um, in your Serena Group Toolkit. The only feature of this that's not quite as good is that the search um, is not quite as um, uh, capable. Uh, so you really have to go through the folder structure to find things. And when you find what you want to go ahead and add, so let's go ahead and go to the Serena Forms library. Say I want to add the JCP Homeowner's Guide booklet or something like that. Or actually, I'm just going to do a San Mateo County Services directory and add selected. That'll go ahead and add that form in there. And then you'll be able to place the appropriate signature locations on that page uh, as you see fit. So if you wanted them to sign this, you could go ahead and just click on the individual, drag the signature locations where you need to go. When you're all done with everything, um, you can check on the uh, other actions as well and just confirm uh, on the recipients here. This uh, indicates that you're going to require people to sign in order if you check this box, and it's checked by default typically. And in this case, it's going to send the email to me uh, first. It, I need to sign it before Kavitha will even see it, and then Kavitha will need to sign it before um, Sundar uh, is able to see it. Um, and in this case, I want something done quickly, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and eliminate the order signing, and this way it will be sent to uh, all parties at the same time. Or alternatively, what you can do is you can sign an order and have you sign first so you can confirm all the details, but then you can have it uh, go to um, uh, Kavita and Sundar at the same time, and you see if you add the same number here, once I'm done signing, it will then distribute via email to both of those. And then we also can come in here if you want and add a new recipient. So this would be um, especially appropriate for a uh, transaction coordinator. Um, if you wanted to go ahead and CC a transaction coordinator when the entire transaction is complete. Oops. Um, and so you can go ahead and just receive uh, a copy. Uh, and then you can put uh, that individual as third after everything is complete. You can go ahead and hit done. 
And now you've kind of completed all the tools and you can go ahead and hit send uh, to go ahead and send it off to your clients. It will be delivered via email like normal DocuSign um, and then you will be able to uh, see it in your um, DocuSign account um, when it is completed and also email back to you. Thanks for watching.